in Norway, a cultural project is underway that will benefit generations yet to be born. It's a library that's also a time capsule. Each year, for 100 years, an unread manuscript by a prominent author is being placed inside, locked away until the year 2114. Our journey began in a Scandinavian forest with what's become an annual ritual. Deep in the Nordmarka forest on the outskirts of Oslo, Norway, <laughs> hundreds have gathered from across the world for an expedition that will take a century to complete. Nice. Yeah. They've come together to witness the annual handover of a manuscript that will be unread and unpublished until the year 2114. We join them for this solemn connection through generations. The journey starts essentially right here in this very long hike into the forest. It's known as Future Library, launched eight years ago by Scottish artist Katie Patterson. The core of Future Library is time and longevity, but also hope and rituals. It's more important than ever that we expand our time horizons. Every year, one of the world's most acclaimed authors is invited to submit their work, a practice to be repeated a hundred times with only the title revealed. The manuscripts will be printed one day on the paper provided by these trees, a thousand of them in all, planted for what's been called the world's most secretive library. <laughs> Among those inaugurated this year, in a ceremony encompassing missed time for the pandemic, Zimbabwean writer Zizi Dagaremba. And so I am utterly humbled and privileged to have been asked to participate in this. The BBC named Dagaremba's debut novel, Nervous Conditions, one of the top 100 stories that have shaped the world. She says Future Library is one of the most important projects she's been a part of. There's something about what happened today that centers you on thinking about the future, too. Absolutely. And thinking about it now from the point of view of I am here today, but I am also part of the future through the actions that I enact today. There is something fantastic, isn't there, about writing a book that's going to be unread for a hundred years? and won't be opened until everyone alive now is dead. Norwegian author Carl Uwe Knausgård, whose autobiographical series, My Struggle, has been translated into 35 languages, calls it a dream assignment. It puts into question all the things that the writer has to think about. Who are you writing for? Why are you writing? Monks represented the third author, Ocean Vong, the best-selling Vietnamese-American novelist of On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous. After the ceremony, the manuscripts then make their way to city center, where they're kept inside the Oslo Public Library, housed in the silent room, which officially opened a few weeks ago. Authors store their works inside a thick glass drawer inscribed with their name, a time capsule. Patterson helped design the space. Even as the creator of Future Library, you don't know what's on these manuscripts. Oh, I have no idea. Of course, I want to know. Yes. But if I looked at them, it would break the spell of the whole thing. With 100 layers for 100 manuscripts, the room, a vault, is designed to represent the inside of a tree. The wood fell from the future library forest itself as part of land regeneration. It's an endeavor with unique support from the city of Oslo. Is there anything like this anywhere else in the world? No, I don't think so. It shouldn't be. It's <laughs> unique, it's an artwork. There should be only one. Anna Berta Hovit helped commission Future Library. What, what was it about the idea of the project itself? that made you say, we're gonna take a chance on this? I like these kind of challenges, <laughs> I must admit. I come from an old farm, 14 generations at least. My last name is a Viking name, so I'm very grounded. So I think our, our world is, there's too many short-sighted decision-making. 100 years, that's not that long either, <laughs> you know, when you, when you are brought up on a farm like that. Hoven now chairs the Future Library Trust, which selects the writers. Everyone asked has said yes. 
As ambitious as the project is, a promising sign of success came when Margaret Atwood, author of The Handmaid's Tale, signed on as the first contributor. We will be able to communicate across time, which is what any book is in any case. Authors have nearly a year to compose their manuscripts, given free reign on length and genre. No rules, except not to share their story with anyone, even an editor or family. I see how the people of 2114 mm. will benefit from this. How do people today benefit? How, what do they take away? It's a simple ceremony. It's just in a forest. It's just trees and, you know, it's just words and paper. But it's quite humbling from the one-click Amazon world of, like, you know, expecting instant gratification. But to always live in that world is going to have consequences, you know, because our actions affect that future. And even though they seem distant, it's our children's children. The library is also an act of faith in future generations to be guardians and carry out the project's final chapters. These woods providing a vehicle of optimism for the eventual readers of these books. What do you want them to take away from this at the end of, at the end of all of this? I think, you know, it started as such a small thing, but I, I just hope people will take away that in this moment of time, the generation that are being born now are being born into troubles that the last generation did not even have to think about. And so I think it's about leaving something that's hopeful, that's saying we see you, we respect you, you're not born yet, but you're important to us. And we really hope that by the time you read this book, some of the problems that we're facing now may be sorted out. And they're guessing that uh, with a thousand of those trees, they have enough material to make about 3,000 copies of those books. And wow. you can buy those certificates now. It helps fund the project and then pass it on to whoever you think might get it in the year 2114. Love that. that beautiful is, story. It is a beautiful story. Thank you for bringing it to us.